Okay, let's start. Welcome to all uh, to this uh, new Step Up uh, event. Uh, just to remind, Step Up is uh, this series of uh, capacity building um, on the road towards COP26. I'm Domenico, and uh, together with my colleagues, Ade DG, Ale, and Doir, we are uh, uh, like uh, moderating and uh, uh, organizing this session. So I will stop myself here. I will give the floor to uh, Dedigi and Ale Garcia to introduce themselves. And then uh, they can give the floor to the uh, speakers of today that are very, very, very interesting. So the floor is yours. Go Dedigi. We cannot hear you, Adedeji, sorry. Okay, so maybe Adedeji is unmuted, but I can start. Hi, hello, good morning or afternoon, everyone. Um, here in Mexico, for example, it's 7 a.m. And well, my name is Alejandra. I'll be moderating this session. Um, greetings, whatever time you are. Thank you to all the participants for being here, for joining, and to the speakers for accepting our invitation. Um, our first speaker will be Bas Winter. Um, so I give the floor to Adedeji because he will introduce Bas. So go ahead, please, Adedeji. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Aditi Adedeji. I'll be your co-moderator for today. Once again, I want to welcome you all for this hot live series. We are so happy and honored that you can join us today. And we promise to make this session as interactive as possible. A little housekeeping. This session is being translated to Spanish and Portuguese. I enjoy you all to select your preferred languages. And if you, if you are joining us for the very first time, you could remember all your journals during the last episode. You could remember we talked about the role of youth as an agent of production and NDC ambition. And without further ado, this month will be we are focusing on uh, the role of empowerment, environmental empowerment, and strengthening action for nature to achieve sustainable development goal. Joining us today, we have with us Yongo Ace Working Group contact person, Boss Twitter. Start this guy and go on. And oh. Boss, Boss Twitter, can you hear me? Yes, we are unmuting him. Yes, I tried to unmute myself, but um, <laughs> I wasn't allowed yet. But now I'm here. Um, thank you very much. Um, great to be here in this uh, afternoon for me from the Netherlands. Um, I'm the ACE contact point of the of the contact point of the ACE working group of Yongo. And you're all here because you're interested in climate empowerment. What it, what is it? What's going on this year? What is going on in relation to COP26? Um, and I uh, will, together with Fleur, in a bit, uh, give a short introduction uh, about it. And, and I will specifically focus on what, the, what Yongo is doing and specifically what the working group is doing. Um, and with ACE um, itself, it stands for Action for Climate Empowerment. And what that specifically means is we want everyone in the world together we want people to feel empowered to take up climate action and feel like they have the capacity to do so and that's a pretty large task so um unfccc has subdivided into six elements um and that means education, training, public awareness, public participation, uh, access to information and international collaboration on those other five uh, aspects. But for me, um, ACE is one of the most personal aspects of climate action. It means that I feel, I know what's going on, what the science says and what we should do in order to prevent climate disaster and that I say myself all right I am not sitting down I am not 
uh, I don't say I can't do anything about it. I see that there's a need to take up action. I will do so and I know how. How do you do that? We try, the UNFCCC has divided those six aspects um, of that, uh, of the empowerment, because it's a feeling you feel empowered, you should feel empowered. I want to do something about the climate. I want to uh, take up action. So how do you achieve that? Um, in 2012, and way before the start of the convention, but if we are going back there, that's gonna, uh, then we're here tomorrow still. Um, in 2012, there was uh, the Doha work program, which is basically all the efforts around ACE um, are being formalized by all the parties. And what is the world going to do uh, with relation to climate empowerment? That work program has finished in 2020. And the idea was in 2020, we will negotiate to have a new work program. Well, uh, COVID threw all our schedules and programs and ideas and expectations um, out the window. So at COP26, um, there will, um, we as the working group want to make sure that there's a new work program being decided, that it has a lot of ideas, uh, improvements on the previous one, and a lot of ideas that we say this is absolutely necessary for the next couple of years, we say a decade, um, this should be going on um, before, to make sure that we have effective uh, climate empowerment. And I will um, uh, share my screen. Um, a short, the, are we as an ACE working group, what are we doing? What are we working on? We currently have 70, uh, 47 active members and around 100 observers in our WhatsApp group, which is our main uh, way of communicating, working together. And we together um, have set at the beginning of the year, all right, this year is going to be incredibly important for ACE. We need to have a well-defined, ambitious work program at COP26. So how do we do that? What are we as a working group going to do about it? We the, had a brainstorming session and we came up with seven goals that we want to make sure that we achieve in 2021. First one, I'm going to quickly go through them, is hosting uh, a youth forum. Goal two is having a folder, having one page for new members. What is ACE? What's going on? What's the history? Uh, what is uh, happening next? Um, three documents on how to lobby for ACE national focal points. And I hear you thinking ACE national focal points. I will uh, come back to that in a bit later. The, um, I will, I will say it now, ACE national vocal points are the people from the different parties who are responsible for all the ACE efforts. They said at the Doha work program that every country should appoint one. Um, and until now, not every party has one and not all the ACE national vocal points have the right capacity, have the um, sufficient so resources to act out um, all the efforts around that. So that's one of the, I'm already spoiling a bit. That's one of the things that we want to say, this needs to improve in the new work program. Um, we, for our lobbying and advocating effort, we want to make sure that, hey, this is our work program and this is what you should adopt to go to negotiators, Asian national vocal points from parties and say, hey, we thought about this, 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 and this, and we want to make sure that uh, if you would agree, if you think it's a good idea, take this and um, go, go forth and use it as your own idea. We want this to be implemented. 
We're also coordinating with other working groups within Yongo, and we want to make uh, a shared process that countries can use to report and measure their progress on ACE, which has also been an issue at the, pre uh, at the previous working group. There has been reporting, but that has more been, hey, look at me doing awesome stuff, all right, but that's, that's great, but how was it first and where are you going next? So we also have a reporting measuring um, idea that we want to make sure happens in the work program. And as uh, goal seven, final one, is we have an uh, idea for how to finance ACE efforts around the globe via a marketplace where host would be hosted by the UNFCCC, where uh, people can ask for funding for their project and uh, funds providers can say, all right, this looks like an awesome project. I want to support that. So looking at the time, got four minutes left. This is what we as a work uh, working group, um, we have a whole document and I will happily share that later uh, in the chat um, that we want to make sure there's a new ACE work program. We, and that contains specific ideas that we want to bring forth. Um, as of right now, we're still figuring out the language and um, figuring out the document itself. But these main ideas um, have also been uh, presented to work together at COP26. Due to the time, I cannot go through all of them. But one, uh, a couple of things is measuring, reporting, uh, and having ambitious goals on ACE. Um, having... Um, and youth age national vocal points, um, attending parties that they can integrate ACE as efforts into their NTCs, um, and having a way of funding for ACE. Um, there are many, many more, and I will gladly answer any questions you might have on that, but I'm going back up. Um, if you think, all right, I want to know more, I want to be a part of this, I want to uh, help push this effort forward, please join us in uh, the WhatsApp group. I will also uh, share that in uh, in the Zoom chat and that might also go on the Facebook later on. Um, but I wanted to end with um, one last call, why I think, uh, why I am, and I see a lot of friends um, are pushing for uh, action for climate empowerment. Um, for me, being able to say, all right, this, I found this highly important and I want to work to achieve and make sure that we as a collective world move forward. We have more people taking action, more people working on mitigation, adaptation, finance, oceans, agriculture, all the other aspects, that gives me an incredible sense of purpose that, that gives a purpose and energy and that is so incredibly worth it to me on a personal level and working with others to make sure that they also have that same feeling. Um, that has been... Uh, I've been incredibly grateful that I was in the, that I could do that myself. So I hope that you, as a listener viewer, that you are uh, getting excited to do the same. And please reach out to the working group um, in your country yourself, or um, right now at the Q and A. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bas. Um, all these seven goals set speak of a clear scenario for the future and the sense of purpose you've mentioned. So thank you very much for your talk. And now that we have this important youth perspective, um, we would like to move to a second perspective, which is gonna be Fleur Newman. She will be our second speaker. So I introduce you to Fleur. So 
Edward Newman leads the intergovernmental work on gender and climate under the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, the UNS C, and the Paris Agreement. She's also the gender focal point and focal point for women for the UN Climate Change Secretariat. Flair is a lawyer by training who, before joining the UN, spent 10 years practicing law in the private sector in areas including climate change, sustainability, energy, and international law. Throughout her career, Flair has been an advocate for gender equality and empowerment of women and girls. Flair has a Bachelor of Science in Sustainable Development and Master of Laws in International Law. So thank you very much, Flair, for accepting the invitation. We are uh, very grateful and excited to hear your talk. So, and also just a few days ago, we commemorated International Women's Day. So um, as we have already seen, these gender approaches are more necessary than ever. Um, and please, Laura, could you give us a broad overview on the AIS dialogue, the state of the art, the future initiatives from the point of view of the UNFCCC? I, I give you the floor. Thank you so much. And thank you very much for the invitation to join you today. Um, it's great to be here. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever, wherever you are. Uh, one of the advantages of being uh, fully virtual is that it, we, can, we can speak to people in their own spaces. Um, thank you to Yongo for the invitation. And, uh, and I'm very happy to be sharing information with you about Action for Climate Empowerment or ACE and what's happening over, particularly over the next few months under the UNFCCC process in the lead up to COP26. Um, in addition to working on gender and climate change, uh, I lead the work on action for climate empowerment. And this is the, how I describe this is, is the international framework under the convention and Paris agreement for how countries, regions and local communities, as well as civil society can engage on uh, climate change education, and Baz has already been through this, but um, uh, the, the six uh, areas are climate change education, training, public awareness, public access to information, public participation, and international cooperation. And, the, and children and youth is a cross-cutting focus. So implementation of all six elements is foundational in solving the complex challenges presented by climate change. As Baz has already highlighted, we need everyone to be involved, informed and contributing to the urgent transition we need to low carbon, just and climate resilient economies and societies. ACE is foundational in, achieve, in achieving the healthy, safe and just future because it's not for nations alone. It takes all segments of society. And ACE provides the framework to educate, empower and equip everyone to understand that addressing climate change can also help us address some of humanity's other big challenges. Climate change is tied to poverty, to equality, to clean air, to biodiversity, to everything. And the elements of ACE are also foundational for all the just transitions that are required to move to the low carbon climate resilient economies and societies I referred to before. Not only in obvious sectors such as renewable energy, but we need curious, clever minds turned to decarbonizing public and private transport while making it more equitable, rethinking urban and built environments, redesigning food systems, strengthening the resilience of our health systems and redirecting capital among many other areas. This starts with quality education that integrates climate change across all curricula from economics to civics, to science, to art and beyond. It starts in kindergarten building through primary, secondary and tertiary as well as vocational education. And importantly, indigenous and traditional knowledge systems and learning need to be a part of the future. Ensuring that COVID-19 recovery packages not only build, uh, build in climate resilience and mitigation measures, they also need to address the gender gaps that have widened during the pandemic. And this includes ensuring girls are able to remain in education. 
We need to normalise lifelong learning in different formats because the climate emergency will continue to create firsts and unprecedented events. So for all of us to thrive, we, we will need to be adaptable and agile. While technological solutions are undoubtedly needed, so too are solutions to address the urgent shifts in understanding and acceptance of the changes in our behaviour that the climate emergency demands. Next slide, please. 2021 is an important year for ACE under the intergovernmental pro process in the lead up to uh, COP26 in Glasgow this year. And you've heard already from Baz that um, there was a work program. And that's because although ACE is grounded in an article under both the Convention and the Paris Agreement, these articles don't provide much detail on the how to. That, that was built into the latest work program, the Doha work program, which uh, started in 2012 and ended last year. So this year, parties are reviewing the success and challenges arriving, arising from the Doha work program and are looking to agree a successor work program at COP26. And here, when I'm saying parties are reviewing the success and challenges, obviously others are too. You've just heard from Baz about how the younger working group on ACE is doing that. But in this case, it's important to note that party, the, the Convention and Paris Agreement, it's a party-driven process. So that means that countries make the decisions and that in, in all of this, they can be informed and uh, guided by um, what we refer to as observers to the process. But ultimately, it's parties who make those decisions. The chair of the subsidiary body for implementation, which is one of the um, permanent bodies under the convention that um, is responsible for, for uh, ensuring that work actually happens under the convention and Paris agreement. And it's the body that's resp responsible for the review and future work program. And so the, the, the chair of this body has, uh, with the support of the security Secretariat developed a plan to support parties in advancing discussions on the review and future work program in a virtual setting. Because, like it or not, we are, well, we definitely don't like it, we are in a situation in which the pandemic continues to alter the way in which we uh, go about our daily lives, and in person meetings are still uh, very challenging at this time. So, in order for work to continue, it it necessarily has to go into a into a virtual setting, and so this uh, very recently this um, uh, the um, activity series to support our parties in advancing this discussion was approved by the um, subsidiary the, the chair of the subsidiary body for implementation, and the purpose of that is to advance the discussions on both the review and also on the future work to enhance the implementation of ACE under Article 6 of the Convention and under Article 12 of the Paris Agreement. The first event is going to be held this Wednesday on the 17th of March, and it will provide a summary of views that were gathered um, through submissions uh, from both parties and observers, and Yango uh, made a submission uh, to in that um, submission call. And these were collated in an information note that was prepared by the Secretariat last year. And so the information session will talk about that, but we'll also talk about the inputs received through the 8th ACE dialogue that was held both virtually and regionally for the first time last year in 2020. And the purpose is so that parties and observers are fully informed in, pressure, in preparation for the rest of the series. The first, uh, there are going to be a combination of expert group meetings and um, virtual informal consultations. And the first expert group meeting, which is to be held on the 14th of April, will enable technical discussions, and Baz mentioned this, um, on how monitoring, reporting, and evaluation of national action on ACE can be um, implemented under and, and looking at different aspects of the current uh, transparency rules and arrangements and what might be possible going forward. The second expert group meeting to be held on the 5th of May will enable a technical discussion on support to implementation and that includes in relation to climate finance and capacity building. 
and in between these there will be three virtual informal consultations and the first of those is on the 24th of March and that will be chaired by the SPI chair. And it cre will create a non-negotiating space for discussion on the review and future work. All of these sessions will be open to observers. However, participation is limited by the technical constraints of the virtual platform we have. So just the same as in a physical uh, meeting, the, the constraints are how many people you can have in a room. We have the same issues with a virtual platform, but we anticipate that the expert group meetings will also be um, uh, streamed and the information session is going to be streamed um, and recorded and made available on the UNFCCC website. In terms of um, other activities, our focus at the moment has been around um, preparing and supporting the SBI chair and preparing these, this activity series because it's important that we maintain momentum on the discussions and we progress, help parties to progress those discussions. So that's been our primary focus for the, for the last few uh, months, but we are also, um, privileged to have the support of, uh, of Austria in, in a, a project, and you'll hear more about that from the next two speakers. But we also have, um, as a secretariat, we're not an implementing entity, so we support, and that's one of the reasons why international collaboration and cooperation is so important, is that there are lots of different UN organisations, but also other international organizations and NGOs and civil society associations who are working on this. And our part of our role is to bring everyone together and to, to help coordinate um, that action so that, that um, all of those individual actions together are, are building um, and accelerating the, the implementation of ACE. And we will be um, continuing to support the capacity and skills building for um, ACE national focal points and to promote the, um, the participation or, and con contribution and leadership of youth in climate action. Um, and those uh, activities will be um, supplemented by these these activity series that we are doing under the, under the process. We were, um, the, the willingness we've seen to, but from both countries and, uh, and observer organizations to engage on this topic in 2020 through the ACE dialogue and uh, through submissions and this, at the, the working group of Yungo, um, we see that this is a great foundation for a robust decision at COP26 and that this action can deepen the understanding of the role that all six elements of ACE play in achieving the goals of the Paris Agreement. And I'm going to stop there. Thank you very much, Flo. Thank you very much, Baz, also. Um, well, you have already mentioned seven ACE goals, six elements on the road to COP26. And you have also talked about the context of the pandemic, about how to participate as young people, the importance of action at the national level. So now we would like to move on to a short uh, question and answer session now. If someone in the audience wants to comment on something, please open the microphone to ask questions. And we as hosts will enable your mic. So just click on it and we can do so. Or if you want, you can write it on, in the chat and feel free to, to do so. So any okay. questions, comments? So my yeah, mic, I think I'm going to take that. He said, or she said, how can we make this practical on ground to implement youth and entire communities? I get Flair, I get that question directed to you. Because said, since all things are in place and ready to take them on fire, then how can we make this practical on ground to impart youth and the entire community? Just talking about the importance of this environment. 
Thank you. I think I can speak to this, but I think Baz can too, um, and perhaps a little closer to the ground than than I, I am at the moment. But um, you know, one of the 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 ways in which um, a, a action for climate empowerment, the ways in which I've seen action for climate empowerment just in the last year, um, connect uh, youth to to um, climate action is through um, youth-led platforms, so on a regional basis. So for instance, very recently in Asia and Pacific, um, a collaboration between uh, UNDP, UNFCCC, British Council, and a number of youth organizations, so Yungo was one of those, um, has created a, a space in which um, to connect youth to climate action that's happening uh, in the region. The same has happened uh, in, in Ghana uh, for a, a, a regional, another regional um, hub. And we've seen this also happen in Dubai. And these are only three examples of where at a sort of more regional international level, the, the, this action is, there's an, um, an understanding of the need to create these spaces where youth can come together to, to talk about this, but also to, to learn, to share their ideas on what the future it should be in terms of uh, green jobs, in terms of uh, issues around um, uh, around education, but also uh, sort of more around you know what investment for the the recovery packages, those kinds of things, and these these um, uh, hubs that we're seeing um, being created uh, are one way in which that can happen. But Baz, I'm sure you have, and of course, joining younger is is another option. Yeah, um, well, the, it, the things are already on fire. There are already many things going that are sort of from bo uh, bottom, uh, from the bottom to the top that people are um, taking actions themselves. And what um, we would like to see from a, a party side of view is that those efforts that that are being coordinated from the top bottom so hey here um, in the UK we have this uh, amazing initiative and here in Kenya they're wor uh, working on a similar pro problem and they have tried this this and that in the UK before this was the solution so learn from our mistakes that um, there's a, a lot of stuff happening there's a lot of energy already going on um and the coordination sharing those practices that is something that sh um with um with the amount of effort that is put in there that has can multiply that effort enormously of uh, have that impact and then you have also informing the people about what is climate change, what's going on there. And on the other hand, all right, if you want to take up action, how do you do that? Are you uh, working, training, having education on um, green jobs? How are you working in the energy sector? Are you working in an agricultural sector? Um, there is already a lot of things in place, but the coordination is something that um, from my point of view, um, I see a lot of great initiative. And if those can multiply by coordination, international co collaboration and cooperation on those, that is something that can um, truly accelerate things. Yeah, many thanks, boss. Thank you for that specifically. Uh, answer in taking this conversation forward. I think I'm not sure there's any other question or any other one in the, in the chat box. So, taking this increment section forward and talking about strategic information about this, I would like to introduce Maurice Laposa, the founder and director of International Association of the Advancement of Innovative Approaches to Global Challenges. So, you have the virtual grant. So, Thank you very much, Adede. Um, okay, yes, I'm unmuted. 
So uh, welcome everyone, uh, greetings from Austria. I'm with the International Association for Advancement of Innovative Approaches to Global Challenges. Our mission is to empower youth for climate action. You see where we are located at the heart of uh, Europe. And uh, I'm happy and proud uh, to be able to work with Tali Wögerbauer from the Austrian Federal Ministry for Climate Action. And perhaps uh, we, it would be good if we have first Tali providing some uh, uh, bridge information from this uh, UNFCCC process from the global level and uh, Austrian leadership role in this. And then I will provide some more um, specific information about what we are doing here in the context of the, the ACE AT project. Tali, would you agree that you take the floor here? Thank you so much. Um, good morning, good afternoon to everybody. It's really a, a pleasure for me to join this uh, important call and meeting. And uh, it's really a pleasure for me to work with Youngo. Um, indeed, um, whatever Bass has said before, it was music to my ears because I, I always become very, very glad and happy whenever I see the passionate engagement of, of youth. It's incredible what they are doing on climate action. And um, whenever I could join a meeting or an event uh, that was organized for youth by the UNFCCC Secretariat at the COP, it was amazing to see how passionate uh, young people are engaging for the climate agenda. Now on ACE, I think uh, we have a common goal, all of us, to strengthen ACE within and beyond the UNFCCC process in order to empower all members of society to engage in climate action. But to do so, I think that there is a need to change the perception on action for climate empowerment ACE. Because as a negotiator, national focal point, and ambassador for ACE for the UNFCCC at the same time, I recognized that ACE hasn't got the attention of parties that it should have deserved. So ACE was always a little bit low key uh, for, for the agenda of parties. And um, when I started to cope with uh, this topic, I, uh, I sat down and I was thinking, what can I do to improve uh, the perception on ACE? And uh, thanks to Miro, who is um, a very, very supportive, not only colleague, but also friend and his organization. And thanks also to Fleur and the UNFCCC Secretariat. Uh, we initiated a project that has the aim to change this perception on ACE. That means that ACE has a much wider scope being used for non-party stakeholders and for parties as well. Because so far, I got the impression that ACE was mainly used for just for education and training. The focus was probably on these, uh, um, yes, on, on, on education. Now, uh, I will ask Miro to introduce then uh, our uh, project and to give you an overview uh, on the project. I, for myself, uh, I apologize. Uh, I have to leave earlier this call, but I am uh, looking forward to work with all of you. Um, I would like to ask Miro to provide you also with my uh, contact details and please don't hesitate to contact me and I hope that uh, either virtually or in, in physically I hope that we can come together that we can work together to develop this uh, topic further and uh, as a negotiator I mean I was especially focused on, on budget this is quite important because uh, the financial resources are probably the condition that we can also work uh, on a topic in a better and more successful way. However, I will do my best that I will per, uh, also persuade and convince my colleagues from other countries and negotiators that ACE is a perfect tool 
to do climate action. Why? Because we have a, a very robust legal tool already in our hands. ACE, I mean, Article 6 of the Convention and Article 12 of Paris Agreement, most or almost all parties have ratified Paris Agreement. So we have already a very robust legal tool in our hand. And you, youth, and you, Yango, just remind your national focal points, your home countries, remind them that the authorities have ratified Paris Agreement. So they are obliged to implement it, and they have also to implement Article 12 as well. And therefore, be always aware that you have a very, very strong tool in your hand. And again, uh, I hope that uh, the, the passion of, of your engagement will be um, exemplary also for, for my uh, negotiator colleagues and, 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 and colleagues from other parties. And again, thank you so much for the invitation that I could join this, this very important call. Miro, please give, give an introduction of our project. And uh, Fleur, uh, thank you so much also that you are supporting us uh, with this project. Uh, by the way, um, last but not least, we have a focus also on gender, youth, and our friends from Africa. So uh, I hope that we will succeed to um, elaborate and develop this topic a little bit further, and that we uh, succeed in changing the perception of ACE of a wonderful, perfect, strong tool to do climate action. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, sorry, Miroslav. I, I just wanted to say that, sorry for not introducing you properly, Talia, uh, but just for, to show our appreciation, I just like to mention a bit of your background. Um, Talia is the Austrian Ministry of Action, Empowerment, Energy, Mobility, Innovation and Technology. She's also the national focal point for ACE, the ACE ambassador for the UNFCCC. And since we are running out of time, it seems, I just want to thank you very much. So, uh, Miroslav, if you want to uh, say something, please go ahead. Yes, thank you very much, El Garcia. Uh, so, uh, first, uh, thanks, uh, Tali, for your leadership and uh, being such an action for climate empowerment innovator and already this view on really looking how can we empower everyone in society everywhere to take climate action. That's really the key to successful implementation of the Paris Agreement. And that's also the aim of this ACE AT project. And uh, we have structured, no, first here, uh, the, it's initiated, funded and coordinated by the Austrian Federal Ministry for Climate Action. The lead partner is the UN Climate Change uh, Secretariat and uh, the associated partners are ECOS, the Education, Communication and Outreach Stakeholders Community, Econ. where I'm also of the founding members and members of the steering committee. And as ECOS does not have an uh, own legal uh, st status, legal entity status, uh, it's my organization, which is formerly the lead contract partner for this, uh, for ECOS. And uh, ICLE, this uh, International Council on Local Environmental Initiatives, uh, is also one of these non-party stakeholder partners. And already this design shows that it goes beyond the uh, national governments and really uh, wants to partner with uh, the non-state actors and uh, having also a focus on youth. So we have here uh, four activity areas, four work packages. One is uh, rethinking and reorganizing ACE for all of society, climate action empowerment. Here formerly the UN Climate Change Secretariat is uh, in the lead with organizational technical support. Uh, content wise, the Austrian Federal Ministry is leading and ECOS and ICLE are contributing. And we are looking on how to improve public and private funding for ACE, uh, how can we get also the private sector engaged, how can we set up a global ACE platform, knowledge platform, information and communication technology tools 
how to support and enable regional ACE dialogues, feasibility of an ACE non-party stakeholder network support structure and the security secretary in Austria. And this point relates also to the question that has been raised before by Mayaya, Mike, how can we uh, make this practical on the ground to impact youth and entire communities? And our belief is that there are so many people who are standing ready to take action, but they are lacking the knowledge, the technology, the funding, the enabling uh, ecosystem, and uh, this ACE non-party stakeholder network support structure. Uh, we are, with this, we are trying to really uh, uh, create a mechanism that uh, delivers action for climate empowerment as a service and with an economic logic that is self-sustaining and with uh, looking also in the possibility in Austria where the legal system allows for uh, quasi international organizations, perhaps such a structure, if it would be have the support, uh, the financial and political one could perhaps uh, be based in Austria. Then we have uh, core activities uh, that the, the Austrian Federal Ministry is supporting at the UN Cl Climate Change Secretary through ACEAT. And uh, Fleur has uh, talked about uh, this work, which is very valuable and very appreciated. And then we have a work package uh, from uh, that I'm uh, coordinating. It's about uh, setting up, you know, putting together a feasibility study and a business plan for a global ACE non-party stakeholder support structure. Uh, uh, two events and perhaps already concrete uh, pilot project digital tools on resource mobilization innovation for ACE and also a digital global ACE platform concept development. And then uh, ICLE is leading the work on how can we better empower and engage local and regional governments in this ACE framework. And we have several outputs, uh, which I will not go too much into details here, but it's really the aim to be action and impact oriented. It's not uh, in, in terms of the ACE negotiations, it is really widening the perspective and also uh, somehow communicating that non-party stakeholders are a key player and um, that the parties, the uh, ACE uh, program within the UNFCCC system, it should uh, become clear how far the national governments and the uh, UN-led uh, activities can uh, really deliver on uh, empowering everyone uh, in climate action and then to make clear what else is needed and uh, uh, who will deliver the, uh, the additional, the complementary resources that, the, that are beyond the limitations of the UNFCC systems. And so we want to guide uh, new thinking and also new uh, concepts and uh, arrangements and resource mobilization and uh, digital solutions also in this field. And so much from my side as an introduction. Thank you very much, Miroslav. I don't know if Adebeji is here or yeah. I can. Ah, okay, so please, yeah. Adebeji. Thank you, Mr. for that exciting new share with us. And I think we should just check for question and answer section. Let's see whether we have any question for you. Then I'm going to the chat now to see whether there's any. If not, I think I have a personal question. Can you please tell us more about the Act Day 2021 and what we should be expecting as it? And mm, maybe at the digit you could write like your question in the chat and. Maybe that could facilitate. Where's the link? Oh, wrong link. There's a link. Yeah. I don't know. It's I've only shared because Tali asked to share her contact details. I've shared here in the chat window. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Yes, I think uh, Adetiji was uh, uh, making a question to Miroslav. Aha, I didn't hear it, sorry. Please. What was the question? 
Yeah, I'm saying like, can you tell us more about uh, the Act Day 2021 and what we should be expecting? Oh, I didn't hear it well. Sorry. sorry, sorry. Like, I'm asking like, can you tell us more about Act Day 2021 and what we should be expecting? Ah, so, okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks. Apologies. Uh, uh, so, a big milestone will now be uh, the Earth Day Climate Summit of President Biden. In my understanding, it's the most important uh, event uh, in general for global climate action, but also for action for climate empowerment. And uh, therefore, we are now discussing with Tali and also with the designated ACE focal point in the, U in the US, Frank Niepold, whether we could uh, organize an ACE uh, innovation webinar uh, through which we would then also uh, draw the attention of the public and uh, also the UNFCCC uh, parties on the importance of ACE. That's one thing. And the other thing uh, that we are also uh, organizing is a webinar in which we will present our plans for youth climate action reporting. Uh, how we, uh, that, because uh, as you probably know, in the Paris Agreement, uh, the parties, the national governments, they have written that uh, they welcome the efforts of non-party stakeholders and that they invite non-party stakeholders to document their actions for the climate uh, on the uh, Global Climate Action data portal, NASCA, uh, which is um, managed by the uh, UN Climate Change Secretary. And uh, uh, there, uh, there are uh, entry points for cities, for civil society organizations, for investors, uh, universities, but there is no entry point for a young person, which is an individual one, uh, not affili affiliated to an organization or, or a company. There is no entry point. And we think that uh, if we want to encourage and uh, empower and reward and recognize youth climate action, we need to have the tools through which a young person can document uh, and uh, what, uh, what this person is doing for the climate. And here, youth climate action reporting is a key um, missing link. It's not existing yet uh, on the NASCA portal. And uh, it's quite a challenge because it's not only one app or so that you could do. You need to create an ecosystem of solutions it, which comprises digital measurement reporting and verification, tools for social proof of uh, uh, confirming that a certain verification and validation of a certain action. Then you need smart standards uh, about how to give value, how to uh, have an uh, impact assessment of uh, such a young person's impact. And these are all elements that are not existing yet. Then there is a need for a global registry a mechanism that uh, there uh, are these actions then globally somehow confirmed and visible and that this information can also be downloaded on an individual climate action dashboard app. And uh, so there are many things and it's an investment of several million dollars and there are several solution providers in this field that need to work together in systemically. And so we are now, uh, uh, working on bringing together a youth climate action reporting consortium and to create also a fundraising strategy around this also with using blockchain technology digital finance fractional ownership and there are so many uh, possibilities for innovative uh, resource mobilization and this is this kind of ACE non-party stakeholder support structure that we have in mind. And this focus on youth climate action reporting, enabling, this will be our primary delivery. And we will see, perhaps we will present it uh, also around the Earth Day uh, Climate Summit of President Biden, or perhaps uh, around the environment, World Environment Day on the 5th of June, because we have also the the UN Environment Program as a very cooperative partner and UN Habitat. And uh, they have the World Environment Situation Room and uh, citizens uh, science engagement of youth. And this could be also one way to frame it to get uh, to 
to present it as an investable project where also philanthropists or social impact investors would uh, then uh, see an opportunity to have high social return on investment if they work on this. And this kind of things. And then we want to be involved also in the um, pre-COP youth event organized by the Italian COP26 co-presidency. Really, it's very laudable how Italy is supporting the uh, youth engagement, uh, really champions in this field. And we think that with our solutions, this youth climate action reporting, that we could have workshops. Uh, one uh, solution that we are also working on is ACE walks, that we give a methodological toolbox to young people so that they can go out in their neighborhood and identify uh, and localize uh, climate action potentials so that it becomes more clear from these abstract things, uh, and global and uh, diagrams and everything, that a young person goes in the neighborhood and says, here is a source of emission, or here is something where we are vulnerable to climate change. And let's put this on a global map, and then to see who would be ready to invest and contribute to solving this local issue in this global ACE framework. This kind of things we are thinking about, and we think that they are huge potential. Uh, one uh, solution also that we're working on that is, I think is very high potential is uh, voluntary carbon footprint compensation with crypto stamps, or with digital stamps. And the idea is that we have Paris Agreement, we have European Green Deal, we have also no, uh, Austrian National Climate Neutrality Strategy saying that uh, we want to become climate neutral as a nation or as global community or European community. But this means that each individual also needs to aim for climate neutrality. And uh, most of us are not climate neutral. And uh, we are putting a burden on other uh, members of human family and future generations with our carbon footprint. And now it should become an ethical standard that those who have a high carbon footprint, that they invest in the capacity of uh, the community or of youth or people everywhere, that they can cope with the negative consequences of this carbon footprint. And let's say if somebody has a carbon footprint of eight tons or it might be easier 10 tons per year and saying at the beginning, it would be the cost of a ton would be 50 euros per ton. That would mean that such a relatively wealthy individual would have to invest in global community and local community 500 euros per year. And with this new digital finance mechanisms, you can track it or you can give uh, people the possibility to participate in decision making. You can, uh, this, uh, who buys these crypto stamps or invests in this carbon uh, footprint compensation or voluntary carbon, uh, uh, added carbon tax on uh, city level, they could then decide that the money goes into a certain uh, activity in a, their city, or they could say, I, I want to help uh, global youth, I want to support uh, more effective. And then you could uh, channel the funding to this kind of wallets and uh, digital communities, and then also track how the money is being used. And uh, with this digital measurement reporting and verification, there would then also be uh, possibilities to capture the value of these activities, these outcomes, and the outcomes can then be attributed to the ones who have uh, financed. And there are so many systemic solutions that are needed really for the world to function, for global family to function. And uh, I think ACE AT is a very friendly, innovation friendly ecosystem to develop some of these ideas further. And we are happy that uh, Fleur and uh, the UN Climate Change Secretariat is our partner here. And let's see, because we need really everyone on, engaged and empowered and let's work together on this. Thank you very much, Miroslav. This was a complete uh, answer, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you, you have told us about uh, funding, platforms, tech tools, interlinkages, the structure at different levels, and all these global map of the framework of AIDS. So please, any further questions in this regard, you can ask 
uh, in the chat, for example, here. Um, let me see the chat. Okay. Oh, sorry, but before your your question, I would like to say the one from Kelly. Kelly is asking to all the speakers, could you speakers tell us more about the role of ACE in next COP26? And I have a personal question to Bas, which is, is there something still missing to engage youth participation regarding ACE? So please, could you comment on this? I will answer a little bit of that. So the, the, the role of ACE in COP26 is the, 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 the main focus is the decision that needs to be agreed by parties to both the convention and the Paris Agreement um, on the review of the previous work program and very importantly, the next work program, which will um, provide the, the framework and the the more practical how to uh, implement ACE. So that is the primary focus of ACE um, for COP26. But there's also um, other elements related to showcasing um, climate action and uh, and support to, to COI, the, the Conference of Youth uh, immediately before the COP. Um, so, but, uh, the primary focus for ACE at COP26 is the decision. Garcia, Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Garcia, shall I take your question? And then yes. maybe Miroslav can take my question afterwards. Yes, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had, I had a bit of difficulty, all right, what is missing? And um, I think there's a, there are many, many great ideas, a lot of vision that this is what we need, what needs to happen. Um, a lot of people, parties needs to be convinced of that as well and then um, commit to those ideas. But on a um, more individual level, I see that a lot of people when I grew up a lot of people say to themselves, ah, but my actions don't matter on the global scale. Um, but I really want to go on holiday uh, across the world by plane. I want to, I, I really like this steak. I really want to, and that doesn't, what I do doesn't matter. And I think that people, if people give themselves way more credit, if friends of mine didn't start eat, uh, eating vegetarian, I would never been exposed to that. And I wouldn't, if they invited me, hey, join, I wouldn't be eating vegetarian right now. If a friend of mine, if she didn't uh, start with the alerting on a zero waste movement, th then I wouldn't be so conscious about what type of waste I'm producing. So you have people should realize their actions matter so much more than you give yourself credit. And if you accept that what I'm doing matters, A, that's an enormous empowering feeling and that can also give purpose and happiness. And I think if people, uh, youth, children, but also, but everyone, if they say to themselves, what I do matters, then, then acceleration starts happening. Then climate action really takes off. Thank you. Really inspiring. <laughs> uh, Fleur or Miroslav, I don't know who goes yeah. first. Uh, Fleur, please, you, you say. I just wanted to build on what Baz was saying, really, because it's not only the individual action you, you not only have influence in your day-to-day -day life, you also have the power once you have a right, depending on where you are and what age you get to vote, you have a, a power to also change the systems. And that can be done by entering into government positions. It can be done by, uh, by voting. You know, 
the power of the individual is cannot be understated when it comes to to democracy when it works and i i think that the you know these there is a lot of opportunity um, just by being informed and knowing what matters in terms of policy and and because the individual action is absolutely important you know what you do on a day-to-day basis but it's also critical that our leaders are leaders who are aware of these things and one of the ways in which you can influence that is through is through the power of uh, of civic engagement absolutely couldn't agree more <laughs> And if I may um, answer to the question of Buzz regarding how to motivate people really to pay uh, for their carbon footprint compensation, it has several levels. So one is what you already started, uh, that people understand what I do matters. And it is somehow uh, this ethical level and uh, morality. It should be that we leave this planet in a way that it is balanced, what we've got and what we've given. And uh, it is uh, really, you cannot come on a planet cause a lot of uh, damage and burden uh, uh, other parts of the world and future generations and then just leave and it's fine. It's somehow, it should be an ethical standard that we need to leave, uh, to lead a good life. And that means climate neutrality including some compensation payments and uh, payments into ways uh, that uh, others will handle uh, the climate crisis, but also sooner or later this uh, uh, carbon uh, 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 neutral uh, technologies, negative car uh, ca carbon uh, technologies, there will be also huge investments needed. And sooner or later, we have to reduce the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere again uh, significantly with probably with technology, also with nature-based solutions, but also anyway, there will be resources needed and ethics and ethical standards and also faith-based uh, communities will play a role. So that's this value and ethics part. Another part is uh, this part of community. There are now very many cities that have declared climate emergency or they have declared uh, climate neutrality goals. And uh, here there could be, uh, it's also this term of responsive cooperativeness. If other people see that my neighbor is really uh, doing his or her part then I'm also more ready to do it. And in the context of cities, if they say, yes, we have now a shared uh, climate neutrality goal, 2030, 2040 or whatever, and then we work together on it, this kind of community also helps uh, to go through it and uh, give some, uh, some sacrifices also from yourself. And the third element is fun. And it's also connect connected with this community. And uh, we have here already developed some solutions with the ETH Zurich uh, Climate City Cup, where we it, the gamification of uh, climate efforts on city level. And here also, it's also um, uh, the, the cities who want to become climate neutral or who want to be leaders in this field, they can then provide incentives that they can provide games, events, and uh, on the apps that could uh, this uh, collecting digital badges uh, for for the payments, but also for other ways of contribution. It should not also be that uh, people can buy themselves uh, free uh, from ecological hell uh, with money, but also with investment that uh, if people invest their time, their intellectual resources or so, this should be also counted so there would be digital badges to recognize uh, contributions and this can be very fun it's like this uh, 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 watches that people have individual physical performance apps and we could have then also similar things uh, in the field of climate action and uh, music is also a very important element uh, it's uh, we have uh, global challenges youth music contest we have had a uh, uh, edition of it in the context of COP21 with the UNFCCC and with UNESCO. And uh, once we will have our 
digital platform and apps ready, we will go also for the next round of the uh, music contest. Because uh, one thing is if we come with it first and then people say, yes, I want, I want, but we don't have the tools yet, then uh, it's uh, like a tsunami that goes away. But if we have uh, the solution that we can offer the people and then we ex make them excited with music and then they uh, uh, share, uh, you know, connect with our social networks and our solutions, then we can have big impact. And then also the, the money will come, I'm sure that the mindset of resource holders is now so that they are only looking for the right uh, opportunities that they can trust and that is impactful. Yeah, thank you all for having given us the right to know about this correct action. I think Maya can have the floor now. Please omit Maya so you can hear from me. Hello. Do you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, please go on. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, I couldn't turn my, my video because of uh, network problem here. Yeah, I can enjoy hands. Uh, what Buzz was saying is that, uh, uh, for instance now, youth are out of maybe, let's say out of uh, uh, economic activities like agriculture, youth and women in general, because uh, agriculture now has been uh, dominated with uh, uh, GMO companies and, and industrial citizens producers. Because you find that youth and women cannot uh, start maybe uh, uh, farming activity because they don't have maybe uh, fund to invest for the first time. That's why. Uh, at Superhood, it means sustainable beekeeping and human development. We do teach them on uh, uh, permaculture so that they can uh, uh, use this uh, available, local available materials for them to start uh, farming. And that's the same thing with what uh, Basa was saying and trying to, to, to instill on us. So, and I, th I think us is an, uh, it's a good project and program to implement on ground so that to impact youth and uh, women and the entire community as I have tried to as my, my question was yeah thank you yeah. thank you very much yeah, yeah. thank you very much um, a personal question here to Ben. Uh, from the professional experience and point of view, how can we push our government to have a youth representative as the ace focal point? Because going through the national focal point of each country, we could find it very more difficult to contact them on the west side of the UFCC. Some their contacts are not even there. So it makes us so much difficult in tracking the progress and the processes of this in each country. But we're thinking if we have a youth at a contact point in which you can reach out to, I think that will be quite easier. So how can you or uh, UNFGC help us in doing that or in achieving that? Thank you for the question. Um, I think you know it's a challenge to, to um, the ACE focal points, as Baz mentioned earlier, are, are um, within governments, they're appointed. Um, they are not necessarily, this is not necessarily their only job. So um, they're, they're uh, working within ministries and, and their, their role as ACE focal point may well just be a part of a, a wider job. Um, I think the, the, the process for engaging youth more generally, not just for COPs, not just for delegations, but in the development of um, policies and uh, so the development of nationally determined contributions, the main climate policy instrument that's, that is required by every country under the Paris Agreement. 
because the, the negotiations are important, absolutely. The COP26 is important. And, and in this case, in the case of um, ACE for this year, the decision is, is going to guide the work that goes on for the next um, however many years, whatever is decided as the time frame for the work program. But the other element of this is the ongoing work on the ground that has to happen um, from a national and subnational and local level on a day-to-day -day basis outside of the UNFCCC process. And so it's not only about making sure that there are youth in, in um, climate delegations, but also in the coordination mechanisms that are put in place by countries because um, governments have not traditionally uh, been um, um, worked uh, across ministries, right? If ministries are, are, tend to be focused on their own areas. And one of the things about climate change is that it requires a lot more coordination across ministries and across uh, areas. And so often, it, so many countries are starting to put in place these coordination mechanisms. And one way to engage youth is to include either youth or, uh, associations or um, uh, young people um, as representatives in the, these coordination mechanisms. In terms of what the UNFCCC does, what we can do and what we do do is bring people together. So one of the things that we can do is have events in which the ACE focal points are there and can be engaging with uh, young people in those events. Um, but ultimately, uh, the decision on who gets included in a delegation is up to each country. It's a party-driven process. And the, the, there are, and I think Yango has uh, a role also in, in supporting um, more from a systemic uh, perspective, being able to, to build those relationships with ACE focal points over time, uh, the two um, having Yango as a, as a vehicle through which that can happen. Could I? Yes. Um, yeah, because um, at uh, COP25, there was a meeting of uh, ACE national focal points um, sharing best practice between them. And what we from a working group uh, point of view see is that a lot of ACE national vocal points uh, what Fleur mentioned, that they are, uh, it's not their only uh, responsibility, they're uh, busy with a lot of um, other, they have other things at uh, negotiation that are going on, and there's not, um, there is no, hey, this is, this is what you should do in your specific country when you become the ACE National Focal Point. So what we are trying to do is make the work as an, uh, for the national focal points as easy as possible, uh, reaching out, hey, this is going on. There's, um, if you've recently become uh, a um, national focal point, this is what's going on within ACE, uh, within the UNFCCC, within the uh, processes. This is um, what we're thinking. These are our ideas. If you think, as a party that this is a good idea, go ahead, um, adopt it uh, as your own um, to make sure that um, the parties um, only either have to say yes or no, uh, preferably say yes, or have to do say, uh, to small adjustments um, if necessary for themselves. Um, so that would be one way we as Yongo, especially the working group, um, try to um, to reach out to all the ACE national focal points. Yeah, thank you. Alain? I think it's your turn, Deji. I, I think we are about to close. So, I don't know, you want to add something on the DG? Yeah, like probably the last words from the speaker, from the speakers. just any last words from them? Mm -hmm. Encouraging, anything that might come from them? 
So just we would like to thank uh, our speakers. I personally didn't know much about AIDS, but today I learned a lot. I learned, well, the scenario is clearer now for me. And we know about the achievements, we know about goals, elements, and all these things that we have talked about. So thank you very much. We, we had really different perspectives this day. So I think that was enriching, that was important, and we are about to, to do our next um, event on the road to COP26. So stay in touch, please. And yes, thank you very much. Yes, just a, a final close. Uh, thanks also to our moderators, Adeleji, Ale, Dohir, and all the team that organized uh, this, this event. Thank uh, a lot to our speakers, Fleur, Bas, Mirzlaf, and Tali also that uh, uh, now she's not here, but very glad to have the possibility that uh, her here. Just a reminder that um, uh, we will organize also next step ups and uh, we'll advise by email and uh, uh, by, our, by our Facebook page and the video of this step up will be available also on YouTube. Thank you very much and uh, have a nice day. Yeah, bye-bye everyone.